thing for me about these instruments, it's a very sensual, all instruments, modern and baroque cello, it's a very sensual instrument, but the quality of the sensuality is warm and intimate. Every single Stradivari has been modernized. To, to make a modern violin out of this would require taking it apart, taking the top off, and uh, you know it's glued all around the sides there. It's, it's a major operation to take the top off of an instrument. That's removed, and a much bigger one is put in. Then the neck is removed, it's torn out, cut off from the scroll and peg box, and thrown away. The neck and fingerboard just thrown away, and a new one is made, which is usually a little longer. And uh, We have the violins here, violins here, violas in the back, which you can see are a little bigger. And then we have the cellos, and they don't have an, a stick on the bottom, an end pin, they just hold it between their legs. That's how they hold it up. So that means you have, you, it's not supported. So how do you hold the instrument? Well, you find a way, and when you have short legs like me, it's sort of hard to create a cradle. One thing you do not want to do is grip it. And when you're first learning how, this is why these instruments have all these little quirky differences from the modern brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. One thing you tend to do is grip it. When you grip it, your legs fall asleep. When you're on stage playing, which happened to me, playing a box suite very early in my Baroque career, I realized I was playing the last movement and my legs were both completely asleep. And I thought, how am I going to get off the stage? Very slowly. Also, the strings are made out of sheep gut, so it's a much warmer sound and a much more intimate sound. Two things. 
You're going to hear about 63,000 notes in the next three minutes because concertos are often very fast and they have a lot of notes. So you'll hear Mr. Pronko play a lot of notes. Pay close attention. You'll also notice that he has practiced his breathing a lot. And in order to play the notes, you don't just need the fingers and your ears to be great, but you need to have great control over your wind. So you will notice that he takes a deep breath and then he lets the air out with great precision from his diaphragm. The muscles down here are controlling the release of the air. And sometimes it seems like he goes for a whole minute without taking a breath. And it's not so much that he has big lungs or that he's got super strong lungs. It's that he has practiced and practiced and learned how to breathe properly. And that's something we all need to do as, um, as singers, as, as recorder players, or as horn players, or as swimmers. <coughs> this is a concerto in A minor by Antonio Vivaldi. Sebastian Bach, musician, was probably the greatest musician who ever lived. And he wrote down the notes for us, boys and girls, in scores like this, and they tell us what instruments to use. And because he wrote out all of the notes, we have this music from 300 years ago, and people will be able to play it 500 years from now. It's hard to believe, isn't it? But in the year 2500, people will play this Bach music.
it's, it's not even as good for playing that piece as the modern oboe is. Because the modern oboe can play anything. And this oboe, because of the way that the bore had changed, the sound just isn't right. Mm. In other words, Bach wrote, Mozart wrote, which register sounds better on this oboe? Mm. The upper register sounds better. And if you look at classical music for the oboe, it all capitalizes on this range. Whereas Bach was in that range. And as you'll see when we get the Baroque oboe, or Bach's oboe going, the oboe as Bach knew it, that's where that instrument is strong. And there is no really top register. The smile on your face tells me that you understand that, that this is the instrument it was written for. I play it best on this instrument, not because I tried any harder, but because this instrument speaks that language. The appropriate tool for the appropriate task.